Hey guys, it's Victoria. In this tutorial, I'm going to be doing a very basic drawing. And along the way, I'm going to be showing you how to use Illustrator's tools. The first thing I'm going to do is click on Adobe Illustrator to open it up. Click on Create New. And this is where you set up all your details for your document. On this first line, this is where you name your document. And then below that is the width and the height. I'm just going to keep this at 5 inches by 5 inches. And then down here under advanced options, we have color mode, CMYK, and RGB. RGB is used for web and CMYK is used for print. So I'm just going to keep it at CMYK and click create. Now I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the Illustrator dashboard. So on the left here, we have all of our tools. And if you hover over any of the tools, it'll show you what it is. And then next to it, there will be a letter in parentheses. So for example, if we hover over the paintbrush tool, it says paintbrush tool and then in parentheses is a B. So that means if you hit B on your keyboard, it's gonna allow you to use that paintbrush tool. And below all of our tools here, we have the stroke and fill. And you can switch between those by either clicking on them or hitting X on your keyboard. And if you ever wanna remove the stroke or fill, what you would do is click on this white square with the red line through it, and that just removes the stroke or the fill, whichever one you have selected. Over here on the right, we have more tools, and to open any of these, you just click on it. And if you actually want to keep it open, you would just click on the top and then drag it out. There are several different predefined workspaces that you can use that have different tools open. So for example, if you're just gonna be working with text, you might wanna use the typography workspace. And to get to that, you just go to window, and then workspace, and then typography. And this will open up all the tools that are related to text. And also, if you find that you like to have your workspace set up in a certain way, you can save that workspace. And to do that, you just go up to window again, and then workspace, and then manage workspaces. You would just click on that text box and then name your workspace and then click the plus sign and that's how you would save your workspace. And I already have a workspace saved just because I like to have my layers panel and a couple other things open. But I'm just going to open that up. And as you can see here, I have my layers. And there's also different tabs on each panel. Like say I want to use the artboards, I would just click on that. Or if I want to go back to layers, I just click back to it. Then I have my swatches here and then the gradient and pathfinder and also the align tools are something that I use all the time. Now I'm going to go over some really basic tools. To zoom in and out, you're going to hit command plus to zoom in or command minus to zoom out. And anytime throughout this video that I'm saying command, if you're on a PC, just replace that with control. So it would be control plus and control minus. The hand tool is something that I use all the time, and the key command for that is H. And then you can just click and drag around the artboard with this tool. And if you ever want to recenter your artboard, you're just gonna hit Command Zero, and that recenters it. And now I'm going to start on the drawing. So first I want to create a circle. So I'm gonna use the shape tool. Go over here to the tools, click and hold that down to open up all the different tools, and click on Ellipse tool. I want to change this to be yellow. So I'm going to go down here to my fill and stroke and I want to get rid of my stroke. So I'm going to click on the white square with the red line through it. And then for my fill color, I'm just going to double click on that. So this is the color picker and this vertical bar is where you select the hue. And then inside of this larger square is where you actually pick the color that you want and then it'll show you what it looks like over here on the right. Now I'm just going to click and I'm going to hold down shift because I want to keep the proportions of this circle to make it a perfect circle. Now I want to create another circle behind it and I want to change the color of this to be a lighter yellow so I'm going back to my fill color and double clicking on it and then just choosing a lighter yellow color. All right, now I'm going to use my select tool, which is V on the keyboard, and I'm just gonna move it over here by the other circle. And I want to move this behind, so I'm gonna right click, click on arrange, 
and then send to back. Now I want these to be perfectly aligned center within each other. So I'm just gonna click and drag to highlight both of them. And over here in my tools, I'm gonna click on align. And then I'm gonna select this second icon, which is horizontal align center. And then over here, I'm gonna select vertical align center. And that lines them up. Now I want to group these together. So I'm gonna hit command G. And as you can see, they are now grouped together. I also want to make these smaller. So I'm just going to click and drag and hold down shift to make it smaller. To copy and paste something, you just click on it and then hit Command C and then Command V. And to undo something, just hit Command Z. Constantly be saving your document just in case your computer crashes or Illustrator crashes for some reason. And to do that, you just hit Command S. All right, now I am going to be using the brush tool to create some water. I'm gonna hit B on the keyboard and I'm going to remove this fill and then change the stroke color to black. And then I'm going to change the stroke size up here to one of these predefined stroke sizes. And then I'm just going to draw my water. And with the brush tool, you just click and then draw whatever you wanna draw. Now I want this water to go all the way down to the bottom of the document. So I need to close it up. So what I'm gonna do is with the select tool, I'm going to select this and then I'm going to click on this anchor over here and then make another anchor point down here and then another one here and another one here and I just want to fill this in with a gradient so I'm actually going to remove this stroke color now and then I'm going to click on the fill icon right here and then I'm gonna click on gradient. And then I'm gonna go over here and click on a gradient. Now there are many different gradients you can use. There is the linear one, the radial one, and then there is a free form. I'm gonna stick with linear and I'm just going to change the angle down here to 90 degrees. I just wanna change the color of the gradient. I want the top of it to be a light blue and then the bottom to be dark blue. So with the gradient selected, I'm gonna go over here to my gradient panel. Now I'm going to double click on the little black circle to change the color. And now I'm just going to select the blue color that I want. Okay, and now I'm going to double click on the white circle to change that into a dark blue. If you click a color open and it's only giving you black and white options, that means the color is set to grayscale. So just click on the three little lines at the top and then switch that to CMYK or RGB, whatever color mode you're working in. Now I'm just gonna change this to dark blue. If you ever want to view your artboard only without all of the stuff that's hanging off the edges that's gonna cut off anyway, you can go up to view and then click on trim view. And then that'll only show you what's on the artboard. Now I'm gonna show you how layers work. So over here in our layers panel, if you wanna create a new layer, you just go over here to the little three hamburger lines there and click on that and then new layer. And then here's where you would name it. And then now anything that you create will fall onto this clouds layer. But say I wanna go back to my original layer, I would just go over here and then click on layer one. And then anything I created would be on that layer. Now I'm going to create some clouds and I'm gonna change the fill color to a light blue. And using the ellipse tool, which is L on the keyboard, I'm going to create a bunch of circles and then join them together as one shape. And I'm not holding down shift when I'm creating these circles just because I don't want them to be perfectly round. Okay, now that I am happy with the shape, I'm just going to click and highlight all the circles. And I'm gonna go down here to my Pathfinder. And again, if you do not have this open, you would just go up to Window and then Pathfinder. And then I'm gonna click on this first icon which unites everything into one shape. Now let's just say that I wanted to make these clouds the same color as the ocean down here. To do that, I would just click I, which is the eyedrop tool, and then click on the ocean. But I don't wanna use those colors, so I'm just gonna undo all of that. 
And I'm just going to copy and paste this cloud and I actually want it to go the opposite way. So I'm going to go up to object, transform, and then reflect. And then you can check the preview button right here to see how it looks flipped vertically. And then I'm going to click on OK. Now let's say I want to change the opacity of these clouds. I would highlight them and then go up here to opacity and then click on the little arrow. And then I can either adjust this by moving the little circle on the bar back and forth or I can type in a number. I'm going to show you some of the different things that the Pathfinder can do because it's actually a really handy tool. So let's say I have two clouds on top of each other like this. I can highlight both of them and then if I click on the second icon, this is what it does. And then the third icon does that. And then the fourth one does that. And one that I actually use all the time is this Pathfinder down here at the bottom. And what that does when you use the direct select tool, which is A, you can select any of these pieces individually and then move them away. I'm going to show you what the direct select tool does. So this whole time we've been using just the regular select tool, where if you click on something you can select like a whole object. But say you just want to select like a piece of something and kind of change it, you would want to use the direct select tool. So that is A on the keyboard. And what you would do is just click on your object. And then for example, you could click on like an acre point and then drag it out and just manipulate the shape that way. Here's how the pen tool works. So you're creating these anchor points and you can create straight lines like this. Or when you click, you can hold down and then pull out these little toggle bars and create any shape that you want. Also, you can add anchor points by hitting the plus sign on your keyboard and then clicking anywhere you want to add those points. You can also delete anchor points by hitting the minus on your keyboard and then clicking on any anchor point that you want to get rid of. So say I get rid of this middle anchor point, it's just going to make this part look a little bit smoother. There's also a tool called Cut, which does exactly what it sounds like it does. So if I hit C on the keyboard, and then I can click on any part of this line, and then I can click again. And then using my direct select tool, I'm going to hit A. And then I'm just going to grab that part that I just cut, and then I can delete it by hitting delete on the keyboard. Now for this drawing, I'm just going to create some seagulls with the pen tool. So I'm just clicking and then creating these straight lines. Now I actually want to curve the wings, so I'm just going to highlight that and then go over here to the toolbar and then click on the curvature tool. And now I can click on the line and then pull it up and that will actually curve it. And I want this wing to be a little bit further out, so I'm going to grab my direct select tool and then double click on this anchor and then pull it out a little bit. I want there to be a few seagulls in the sky, so I'm just going to highlight it and copy and paste. And I just want to curve this guy a little bit, so to do that I'm just going to hover over this top anchor right here, and as you can see I get this like double arrow. And then you can click and then drag to rotate it. Now I'm going to create some seaweed down here with the pen tool. Now I want to fill in all the seaweed, so I just want to make sure all my shapes are closed. And then with the pen tool, I'm just kind of clicking and then manipulating the shape to be how I want. I've decided that I want all the tips to be rounded. To do that, I'm just going to select all of my seaweed and then I'm going to use the direct select tool, which is A on the keyboard. And then as you can see, when I click A, it creates these little white cir circular anchors. I'm just going to grab that and pull it down and that actually rounds the point there. Okay, now I am done with all of the seaweed shapes and I just want to fill them in with a green gradient. But first I need to join these together as one shape. 
So what I'm going to do is highlight this and then go over to Pathfinder and then click on Unite. Now I'm highlighting these and then going over to my stroke and removing that and then clicking on the fill and then going back over here to my gradient and I'm just going to change these to a dark green and a light green. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to work with text, which is T on the keyboard. Just click anywhere on the artboard that you wanna add text and then type. Now I'm going to highlight this and turn it white. So over here in my swatches panel, I'm just clicking on white and then I'm going to select it with my select tool and then hold down shift and then drag it out to make it bigger, making sure it keeps the proportions. And I'm actually going to lock the ocean behind this so it's not moving every time I'm trying to select the text. So to do that, I'm just selecting the ocean and then going up here to object, lock, and selection. And I'll just do that with the seaweed too, just in case. Now I want to change the font, so I'm going to select the text and then over here under character and then if you don't have this open already, you can go to window and then type and character. And this first little search bar here is where you select your font. So you can just click on the little arrow and then there's also filters that you can use when you're looking for a font. So for example, if you click this little arrow next to filters and then you hover over any of these under classification like this is sans serif, serif, or say you just wanna search for all the handwritten fonts, you just wanna click on handwritten, and then this will filter the fonts for you, so it's only gonna show you all of the handwritten fonts that you have installed on your computer. I'm gonna go with this autumn collection, so I'm gonna click on it. I think there's too much vertical space between stay and salty, this space right here, and that's actually called letting, which you can adjust in the character panel. So I'm just going to click on the text. I'm gonna go over here to my character panel. And then the second top one on the right is where you adjust the letting. So you can do it over here, or you can also do it manually on your keyboard by hitting option and then the up and down arrows on your keyboard. And now I want to adjust the kerning, which is the space between the individual letters. And to do that, you go over here again to your characters panel and then use the bottom right one, which is the kerning, and then you can adjust it over here. As you can see, it's moving the space out between the letters. And then you can also do this one manually by clicking option and then the left and right arrows on your keyboard. And you can also adjust kerning in between individual letters. So say I just wanna move the S and the A closer together using the text tool. I would click in between the, those two layers and then hit the option and then my left and right arrows on the keyboard. I want to change the color of the word stay. So using my text tool, I'm just going to click and highlight that. And then I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool over here. I'm just going to grab it. And then I'm gonna select the yellow from the sun because I want it to be the same color. You can also edit fonts to make them look different. So to do that, you would just select your text and then go up here to type and then create outlines. So that is gonna turn the text into shapes. And now I can use the direct select tool to edit any of the anchor points that I want. So say I wanted to bring the leg of this A down further, I could do that. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is just create a background. I'm going to go back over here and grab my rectangle tool. Then I'm just gonna pull and then drag out a rectangle shape and then use my select tool and then right click and then go to arrange and then send to back. And I just wanna edit that a little bit to make it a little bit lighter. All right, there we have it. I hope this video helped you get a feel of how to use Illustrator. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.